looking at what we're seeing now, you know, I would say between 100 and 200,000 cases, but I don't want to be held to that because it's, it's, it's uh, excuse me, deaths. I mean, we're, we're going to have millions of cases, but I, I just don't think that we really need to make a projection when it's such a moving target. Welcome to the Buff Show podcast, broadcasting from Appeals Law Group, the appellate law firm that you can call when you're in trouble. Visit appealslawgroup.com. And of course, we're brought to you in conjunction with the American Adversaries Radio Show. And you can listen to the evening show live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time every Sunday through Friday at AmericanAdversaries.com. All right. Or over the airwaves, if you're here in Central Florida on AM 950 or FM 94.9, I am the Buffer Man, Matt Buff, and I am joined once again by the host of the American Adversaries radio show, philosopher and political <laughs> mad scientist, Christopher Hart. Oh, oh my God. It's so good to that? see you again. Good to see you. Good to yes, see you, brother. Absolutely. I tell you what, every time we meet, it seems like a hundred different things have happened since then. Every day, something new. Not just <laughs> stripping away of something freedom. new and bad <laughs> <laughs> actually things are getting good i want to do yeah things are getting good and i want to get into that right now All because right. um if you watch our podcast um from a couple weeks ago even before that let's go back three weeks that's right when uh the numbers were coming out from uh the evil dr bricks and the evil dr fauci uh. dun, 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 dun. they come out and said <laughs> two million americans are gonna die from this we told you on those shows, and we're going to say it again right now, not only are those numbers not going to be hit from specific COVID-19 China virus death tolls, but it's just not going to happen in their models anymore either, Chris. They're looking at their models, and they've scaled all the way down to, what is it now? 60,000. And that will probably fall even more. It and has to. It's because, and Dr. Fauci has admitted this on numerous occasions, and that is that the models are only as good as the information that you put in them. And when you have no real information to put in them, you won't get real data out. You'll get bullshit. And that's what we've been getting from these numbers. And we could tell from the very beginning the numbers didn't add up. They never did add up. They're only now beginning to add up. And it's a situation where, obviously, they had very little information to work with. This is where the Chinese play a very large role in the responsibility for all of this mess and calamity worldwide. So they had no information to work with, so they basically created out a whole cloth and came up with worst-case scenarios. And they admit these were worst-case scenarios. But the problem with the worst-case scenario is... It's a worst case scenario. It's, and there are a lot of other scenarios that can happen as well. I mean, and when you, you focus on anything <laughs> and when you focus on only the worst case scenario, you will make decisions based on that. And therefore you'll be making decisions based on an utter utterly great amount of ignorance. You're admitting you're ignorant. So you're admitting you're gonna do you're gonna assume the worst is ever gonna happen, and then you act upon that. The only problem with that is the worst never really does happen, very rarely anyway, and it's hardly predictable. Never is it predictable, as I, I might add. And so when you're basing your decisions off of that, you're sure to make mistakes. Now, having said that, as the information comes in, the numbers are falling. They're going to fall even more, but we're still getting bogus numbers here. And one of the reasons is that we still don't know how many people were infected and didn't know it and were never tested for it. As and a matter of fact, and have recovered from it. That's right. We yeah. were talking to Patrick Magaro here, who's from New York. He was telling us about, as he helped us set up here in the studios, as he, he was telling us about some friends he have in New York, where in the apartment building where they lived this past winter, December, January, there was this strange flu going around the building that all the adults were getting. But none of the children. Boy, what sound does that familiar? sound like? Who, 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 what? what does that sound like? And you, and you hear similar stories from other people where they're looking back now going, even Mike Gallagher, one of our colleagues on Salem Media Group, which is this, the, uh, the uh, broadcasting network that we do our radio show, show from, the American Adversaries, he's now wondering he had the m pneumonia. Strange, the doctor said he tested him for flu. He thought he had the flu. The test for flu, quote, unquote, came back negative. 
But the doctor continued to say, even though the test is negative, I think you got the flu. And he was in the hospital for pneumonia for several days, missed the course of this show. So there's a lot of people now wondering, which once again indicates that the infection rate is a good deal higher than what we know. Well, there's, well, there's what, 500,000 cases in America as of today. It's Good Friday, 500,000 cases in America. 500,000 active test positive cases. That has nothing to do with all of the probably several million cases that the people were never tested, got disease, never had any symptoms or had mild symptoms, or like Mike Gallagher or Patrick's friends, had symptoms what were confusing. They confused all the prognos- uh, uh, diagnoses. This is a situation where, the, as I said, the numbers never added up because they were using numbers they just pulled out of thin air. Oh, what's the worst case that can happen? The worst case scenario from every country that had a problem. Uh, right. And, and then they built the model of... 15 days, then 30 days to stop the spread, and it shut down the entire country based on the worst case. And people yeah. are, and a lot of people, well, you talked about Mike Gallagher and Patrick McGarrow, but there's stories all over social media and call ins to that very radio show that you were talking about where they were saying, I felt these symptoms back yeah. in January. My right. wife, we were at home last night after listening to these stories, and she and I said, do you remember in January where you had the yes. fever and yep. the cough, and you called your doctor, and after a couple of weeks, it went away, a little trouble Look, breathing? I'm we, like, does we, that sound familiar to you? <laughs> the, the very producer of our show, <laughs> Kathy Santomasino, has a dear friend of hers, childhood, long-term friend, who lives in Long Island. Well, every Christmas, she comes down to visit the family. So she comes down this year as usual, and Kathy always spends Christmas with the family. And the daughter came, in, came to town sick. And everybody was talking about it, you know, and kind of you know, wondering what was going on. And, well, when she left, Kathy got sick. And it lasted, this cough and sort of feverish condition lasts for about a month. Once again, nobody knew what it was. Perhaps it was. The point is, there's a lot more people who have been and probably are infected with this disease right now, even with these shut-in orders, and we'll never know until they come up with the antibody test. And then what are they going to do, force all of us to take an antibody test? And we'll get to that a little bit later on about what, what all that means. Segment. But there's another thing going on here, too, as well. And I tell you what, Matt, maybe we better pick it up in the next uh, segment here, the, uh, the next podcast, because I want to talk about how there's another way the numbers have not added up, and that's because they have been fudging the numbers. They've been cooking the books. They've been putting their thumb on the scale or whatever cliche you want to use. And who am I talking about? None other than the CDC. That's right, the CDC. We're going to tell you about some of the guidelines the CDC has issued that you may not be aware of, but you damn well should be aware of. Well, that, that'll conclude this episode, but stay tuned for that one because that'll show our clip of the week where a lot of things were missed. Uh, a lot of things were said in the task force briefing, but this clip was my 100% favorite clip of the week. You have to see it. We'll show you that one during the next episode. You know, we've been brought to you by Hal Scott Magaro. When you need, when you feel like your case was unjustly ratified, you need an appellate lawyer that's going to fight and work for you. And that's what you get with the team at Hal Scott Magaro. Visit appealslawgroup.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on this show. And also, you can hear Chris and the whole team every uh, Sunday through Friday, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time on AmericanAdversaries.com. Or American or- Adversaries on Facebook. Yeah, American Adversaries on Facebook. And if you go to AmericanAdversaries.com, you can click this YouTube channel, the Facebook page, the Twitter page, all that stuff. And, of course, if you're here in Central Florida, check out AM 950 and FM 94.9 in Central Florida. We'll see you soon. And remember, be smart. Be smart.